Okay, so this is the last part of our um, six-part series for the topic hypothesis testing. So we'll be covering your chi-square. So uh, we have actually two formulas for your chi-square. So this is for chi-square for one-way classification. So we have uh, chi-square is equals to the summation of your actual observed frequency less expected frequency, the square the value, divided by expected frequency. So please take note that we will be using chi-square for us to make inferences about the variance and standard deviation of a single population or for us to test the difference between two or more proportions or uh, it's also used for us to test the independence of the variable or variables rather so again this is our formula and this is for the two-way classification Technically, we will still be using the same formula with that of your one way. So if you can see, so it's the same, but there's only a difference on uh, your expected frequency. So for one way classification, it's already given, but for two way classification, you will compute for it using this formula. So subtotal A multiplied by subtotal B divided by grand total for you to get your specific expected frequency okay so please take note uh, that's only for two-way classification so we'll be having an example of one way classification we'll, we'll also be having an example of your two-way classification so this will be our critical values for chi-square so this are your significant uh, levels or level of significance rather your alpha levels and then this represents your degrees of freedom okay so we have another way of computing the degrees of freedom here comparing it with your t-test okay so please don't use the formula for t-test so let's have an example uh, we have here jym computer shop that carries four qualities of computers so customers are believed to purchase these four computers with the probabilities uh, namely 20 percent 30 percent 35 and 15 for the four computers okay and uh, so this is from the least to most expensive so based from the sample of 400 customers these are the results so for the first uh, computer there's 62 consumers who have purchased it for the second we have 112 the third 144 and the uh, last is 82 so um, we will now try to assess this is the actual data this is our expectation okay we will now try to uh, compute whether our actual okay, contradicts our expected data okay? and then we will be using uh, 0 0.05 as our alpha level so here okay so first we will formulate our null and alternative hypothesis still we will set our level of significance determine the test okay the critical values will compute and then compare and then you will interpret so let's start for the null and alternative hypothesis so for the first one uh, for the null uh, it states that there is no significant difference between the observed and expected frequency so please take note that those two variables are what we are trying to compare your observed and your expected frequencies and then alternative states that there is a significant difference between the observed and expected frequencies. So our level of significance is 0.05 as stated here, our alpha level. 
So we will determine the appropriate test. So uh, we will try to check the normality of data. So whether this uh, actual data are normal with that of your expected data. And we have a given in the form of proportion. Okay, that's why we'll be using chi-square test for, uh, and then it's it's one-way test. Why? Because we only have um, uh, one row, okay, in terms of of the data. So for the critical value or the tabular value, so we have the given. Uh, this should be 0 0.05. Sorry, so we have 0 0.05. It's not 0 0.005. Um, please exclude the, the extra zero. So we have 0 0.05, so meaning our data is found here. Okay. So next step is for us to compute for our degree of freedom. For the degree of freedom, for a one-way classification, the degree of freedom is simply n minus 1. Okay? So in which your n represents the number of data. Okay, or number of proportions if you want. So in here we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Or 1, 2, 3, 4 proportions. So we'll be having 4 minus 1. Our degree of freedom is 3. So at 3 degree of freedom and 0.5 level of significance, we have 7.815 as our tabular value. Okay. So, number five, or step five, we will now compute for our uh, value. So, this is our actual okay, data. So, 62, 112, 144, 82. And then, this is our expected value. So, out of 400 purchases, 20% okay, should be for the first type of computer. 30% will be allocated to the second type, 35 and 15. Okay, so if you will get the 20% of the whole 400 or sample, that's 80. Okay, 30% of the whole 400, that's 120. And then 35%, 140, 15%, 60. So if you will add all of this, it's 400. If you will add all of this, it's 400. So to simply put, this is the actual sales per computer, but this is our expected sales for the computers. Okay, so let's now utilize our formula. Observe less expected, so 62 minus 80, that's negative 18. And then we will square the value, that's why you have there squared, divided by your expected frequency, which is 80. So that's 80. So if you will simplify, we'll be having 4.0500. Next, uh, we have observed or actual 112 less 120. So that's negative 8. Squared, so there, squared, divided by your expected frequency, which is 120, you will get 0.5333. Okay, so same, 144 minus 140, okay, so 144 minus 140, that's 4. So you square the value divided by 140, you'll get 0.1143. And then the last is 82 minus 60, so that's positive 22 squared, uh, divided by 80, so we'll be having 8.0667. So you add all of these figures, that's already your computed value. Okay, so if you will go back to the formula, so formula here, okay, it's the summation of your observed frequency less expected frequency squared all over expected frequency. So with that, these are our data here okay so if you will use this formula we'll be having all of this so you add summation 12.7643
So next, we will now compare. So 12.7643 is greater than 7.815. Therefore, we will reject our null. We will accept alternative hypothesis. Therefore, for the interpretation, there is a significant difference between the actual and the expected. Okay, so there's a significant difference. So that's for your one-way classification. Moving on to your two-way classification. So based on the data a while back, um, you only have uh, one total. Okay, but in here, uh, it's two-way because we will try to compute for the difference vertically okay, and horizontally. Okay, it's considered to be a two-way um, chi-square test. So in here, we will test uh, if there's a relationship or whether, sorry, whether your IQ and uh, the performance, academic performance, uh, is both independent variables. Okay? <clears throat> So in here, we have the academic performance of past fail, failed, and then we have IQ, high, average, low. So this is our subtotal for the academic performance. These are our subtotal for the IQ levels. And then this is our grand total. So <clears throat> we will still follow the same steps, so seven. So first, uh, our null hypothesis states that the academic performance is independent on IQ. Okay, so meaning they are not related. But for uh, our alternative hypothesis, it states that uh, there's dependence okay, on academic performance with that of your IQ. So our level of significance is 0 0.05, stated here, 5% level of significance. And, okay, so what type of test are we going to use? We will be using chi-square. So it's a test of independence of variables. So that's our problem, whether um, academic performance depends on IQ. So we'll be using chi-square, and it's a two-way test because, again, we'll test it vertically and horizontally. So this is our... Alternative hypothesis. So academic performance is dependent on IQ. Okay. So this is uh, the way for us to compute for our degree of freedom. So this is the degree of freedom for two-way test. Okay. So for one-way test, we will just be having N minus 1 in which N represents the number of items. Okay. But in here, uh, we have R minus 1 times K minus 1 in which R is the number of rows. So how many rows do we have? One, two. Okay, except the totals. Except the totals. So one, two. And then number of columns for the given, we have one, two, three. Okay, so one, two rows, and then one, two, three columns for the given only. For the given. You remove the header, you re remove the total, you remove the the uh, particulars or indicators, just the given. And so we will be having a degree of freedom of 2 minus 1 times 3 minus 1, so that's 2. So we have degree of freedom 2. We have alpha level of 0 0.05. Okay. So we have this one. 5.991 as our um, tabular value. Okay, that's for our tabular value. So we will now compute for the data, but the first step again is for us to identify your um, expected frequency because again, this is a two way test. Okay, so with that, um, in terms of computing for the, the uh, expected frequencies, you number your cells first, only the given. 
So number your cells starting from uh, the upper left. So that will be your cell 1 and then below it will be cell 2. If there's another given uh, below it, then it will be cell 3. But on our case, you only have two rows. So this will be your cell 1, cell 2, cell 3, cell 4, cell 5, cell 6. Okay, so I'll repeat. Cell 1, cell 2, cell 3, cell 4, cell 5, cell 6. And then we will use this formula. So let's start with cell 1. So cell 1, you have your subtotal A, which is 60. Okay, so there, subtotal A. And then subtotal B, which is 75. There, so 60 times 75. And then we have our grand total of 100. So you add all of this, you add all of this, it's 100. Okay, so 60, 75, all over 100. We have 45 as our expected frequency. Cell 2, okay, so we have subtotal A, so 60, subtotal B, 25. Okay, so 60, 25 divided by grand total of 100, so that's 50. And then cell 3, subtotal A, so that's 20. And then subtotal B, so that's 75, divided by 100. Okay, so based from our given. So if you will complete to cell 6, so we'll be having expected frequencies of 45, 15, 15, 5, 15, and 5. So with that, we will now again use our our tabular approach in computing so these are our uh, observed frequencies so it's still based on the cell so 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay and then these are their uh, respective expected frequencies and we will now uh, utilize the same function so 50 minus 45, so this one. So we'll be having 5. You square the value, so 5 squared, divided by 45, which is your expected frequency, for it to get 0.5556. So the same, 10 minus 15, so that's negative 5. You square the value, divided by expected frequency of 15, you'll get uh, 1.6667. So both rows are the same. And then next, 10 minus 5, so 5, so based here, uh, 10 minus 5, observe minus expected. So observe minus expected, so 5 squared divided by 5, it's 5. And then 15 minus 15, so that's 0 squared, it's 0. 5 minus 5, 0 squared, it's 0. So you add all of these figures, you will get 8.889. And from that, you, you now have your computed value and your tabular value. You compare, so your computed value is greater than tabular value. Therefore, we will accept our alternative hypothesis. Okay, so for our interpretation, the academic performance is dependent on IQ. Okay, so there. So that ends our uh, discussions for the um, testing of hypothesis, uh, the notes or the, the copies for the critical values will be given to you. And um, the PowerPoint presentation for the introduction will also be given to you. So thank you for listening.